So far we have learned different types of pneumonia, different tools to stratify the setting in which uh, patients should receive treatment. We have looked at causative pathogens for uh, different types of pneumonia, and we have also looked at empiric treatment for, uh, for, uh, for community-acquired pneumonia. Now, recommend an appropriate duration of therapy for community-acquired pneumonia. Now, when it comes to duration of therapy for community-acquired pneumonia, it should be guided uh, by a validated measure of clinical stability. And in general, criteria for clinical stability, which are actually from the 2007 IDSA guideline, is that you use uh, things like the vitals, so temperature, uh, heart rate, respiratory rate, systolic blood pressure, um, oxygenation of the blood, as well as um, ability to maintain oral intake and normal mental status. So these are the criteria you can use to basically see if the patient is clinically stable. And then depending on what's causing the pneumonia. So in general, pneumonia for the most part will be caused by common bacterial pathogens uh, like streptococcus pneumoniae. Uh, so you continue uh, antibiotics until the patient achieves stability, but no less than uh, five days. So if uh, let's say after three days of antibiotic, the patient is clinically stable, you basically finish five days. But if you have finished uh, five days and the patient ha has not achieved clinical stability, then you basically continue beyond five days until you achieve stability in the patient. Now for MRSA and Pseudomonas uh, specifically, the guidelines recommend uh, a total of seven days. So even if the patient has improved by day five, it's important to finish seven days of therapy. And then, uh, you know, if you have community acquired pneumonia due to less common pathogens like uh, Burkholderia, Mycobacterium, and uh, fungi, uh, then longer duration of therapy may be needed depending on what the organism is. So there are uh, various guidelines out there for these less common pathogens, which are beyond the scope of this class. And then, uh, you know, if the community acquired pneumonia is complicated by other infections, then you basically uh, may need uh, longer duration depending on what the infection is. So for example, if someone has meningitis, meningitis may require longer duration of therapy. So even if you're done with the treatment for community acquired pneumonia, you need to treat longer in order to finish uh, treating meningitis. Uh, the same is true with endocarditis and deep-seated infections. In general, deep-seated infections require longer duration of therapy in order to eradicate those organisms. Now, as we get, as patients, uh, you know, achieve clinical stability, it's important to switch from parenteral to oral antibiotics. And when we do that, you can either use the same agent. So for example, uh, if you have something like azithromycin or uh, fluoroquinolones, it's easy to have the same agent that was IV uh, just use the uh, oral uh, bioequivalence of it. Uh, however, some agents are only available as IV. Uh, for example, uh, ceftriaxone is only IV. Um, you know, in that case, you can uh, find an oral equivalent of that agent as long as it's in the same class. So in general, uh, you know, a third generation cephalosporin, you can switch from an IV to an oral. Uh, the same is true. Uh, with uh, the penicillins uh, and beta, I mean beta lactams in general. Now, sometimes uh, you may see that the patients may fail to achieve clinical stability within five days, uh, and this in fact is associated with higher mortality rate. Now, this failure can be due to different things, so it's important to assess uh, the cause of clinical uh, failure. Sometimes this could be due to emergence of resistance uh, while on treatment, and other times it could be, uh, you know, complications uh, or another infection that might be going on simultaneously. One tool that we can use is uh, serial uh, procalcitonin uh, in order to see, uh, you know, when it's safe to discontinue antibiotics if the patient needs a longer duration. So once it goes beyond five to seven days, we can actually uh, get serial procalcitonin and if the levels uh, uh, you know, become low, uh, then uh, that's an indication that uh, treatment has been long enough and it would be safe to discontinue. This concludes this presentation.